the Little Mermaid Junior stage is, musical, high school musical. Oh, you got to see a high school musical last night? Yeah, yeah. Who? Why did you go to see? Uh, why did you go to a musical last night? Because I have a six-year-old that likes the Little Mermaid, and the high school was doing Little Mermaid. Diva. Did you know? Did you know that I was the cowardly line sophomore year? <laughs> I was the only one that was pizzazzy, and you believe that? I. Uh, yeah, I believe it because I see it. Do you want me to do my thing? Yeah, I would love for you to do that. If I were the king of the forest <laughs> and a roof and a roof. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody stepped on my tail. Hello, and thank you very much for downloading this most recent episode of Movie Guys Podcast. You can download many more episodes at movieguyspodcast.podbean.com. Everything, everywhere, all the time, right? That's what we're talking about. A movie I've never heard of um, until the Oscars. I didn't know Jamie Lee Curtis was even in this movie. So I, 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 I came into this fresh. Eric, how the hell are you doing? The way we constantly mispronounce actors' names and now movie titles is turning this into a one-of-a-kind dead podcast. Everything, what are you everywhere, talking about? All at once is the All movie. at once, whatever. A movie directed by the Daniels, brought to us by the Daniels, and is uh, now one of the new most winningest movies in the Oscar and Oscar history. Did it beat Titanic? Let me pull it up here. I know it was it was rivaling. I don't think it won enough to to won seven Oscars. And I think it's in the record holder like eleven or twelve. Eleven's Titanic. Yeah. So it came close, but right. no cigar. Didn't Jamie Lee win best supporting for this then? She did, and we can talk about that to see if she was diver- uh deserving of that. I call her win to be the thank you award. Uh over, Oh I know I agree with you. Over the Angela Bass. Everyone was really thinking that Angela Bassett was going to win. And I think that she should have won. She had a better, Angela Bassett, that is, uh, had a better performance in uh, uh, her movie than Jamie Lee did in this one. Jamie Lee was a bit more of just background and almost like comic relief in this movie. Yeah, no, she does not deserve to win. This was this was definitely the gimme, 100%. Yeah. Yeah, because she never won before, right? Correct. This was her first. Yeah. So this this was her gimme. Um, so here we go. Um, going back from the trauma of a few years ago, from the lashing, <laughs> from another co-host that we had, we get another Asian film that's sweeping the Oscars. Right? <laughs> yes, that's right. Um, thank God I don't have to sit here and psychoanalyze well, anything. The, I'm really happy. The difference, uh, I guess, between that is that this is, uh, um, American, like the Daniels, um, did this in, right? This is not considered a foreign film. It, it's not. I whereas, actually thought it, I thought it was kind of a mixture of both. Whereas Parasite was, and that's what bothered me is because Parasite was nominated for best foreign and best picture. Mm-hmm. This one was not. Uh, uh, this one was not best. Was not nominated for a foreign film because it's not a foreign film. Gotcha. Um, is this Gen Z's Matrix? And I know that probably sounds weird to you, but I kept on watching this. I'm like, man, there's a lot of Matrix stuff in this. Yeah, I understand the the correlation that like what you could get to that, but no, I wouldn't say compare it to to that. There's a deeper meaning into that the matrix was just hard sci-fi kind of i don't know action porn whereas this is uh poignant there's a deeper meaning in this is this has a lot to say about about human behavior and the human condition uh just uh in different parts of life of, of different people and different views there's a lot to, in this movie and I'm happy they got to rewatch it because uh, it's worth the rewatch. I I can you you know re go through those thoughts and reanalyze a lot of what's happening on screen. It it helped, and there's a lot. I, each each character in this, every single one has their own, I guess, multiverse and story going on because of it. It's it's great that how it affects 
everything everywhere all at once. It, it, it makes me look at bagels differently. Um, so the reason why that uh, we're reviewing this for people who are listening is because this movie won film of the year. And it's a tradition here at Movie Guys Podcast that we try to review the film that won film of the year to see what it is all about. So, again, I go into this not knowing nothing, not knowing nothing, no, nothing. Can I tell you a little bit behind the scenes or something personal real quick, Eric? Absolutely. So for years, I've said in a previous episode that I've been working weekends for years, right? So I know I had to go see a high school stage musical last night with my daughter and wife. And I was like, when am I going to see watch this movie to review? And my wife says, this was Saturday. She said, well, you have Saturday afternoon. And I went, oh, you're right. <laughs> so I watched this on a Saturday afternoon. And boy, thank God I did. This movie would have been good for the morning or an afternoon. At evening, 10 o'clock at night, coming home from a Little Mermaid musical, this would have been a chore. Yeah, definitely a commitment. It's, what, uh, close to two and a half hours? 219? Mm -hmm. Right. So you said that this is becoming a good dad podcast uh, with ruining names and titles. The the names I'm going to just completely murder. A lot of that. It's like, you know that guy. You know, he was in the thing. You know, with the with you the know people, the thing. They, they, it was about the it was about the thing. Yeah, he had a red bandana. Yeah, they know, blew up the he, thing. Yeah, the thing. Um, so I'm gonna murder names oh in this. God. So this this movie's a multiverse movie, right? Yes, it takes into the to the theory, the multiverse theory that there are an infinite number of us of you that simultaneously exist in every possibility. This is not a um, new idea. This has been around for a bit. Uh, dimension jumping or multiverse jumping, if you want to call it, that is has been played with before with different universes. Uh, what's a good one? Sliders is, is a fun one uh, from the 90s that we grew up with where you could jump dimensions and there are different versions of you that simultaneously exist in these other universes, but, you know, they're just different variations. So there's one universe where, you know, all your dreams come true. There's another one where it's, you know, all, all your nightmares come true. All, you know, there's somewhere, what was some, some, some weird ones, you know, where red light means go. Hot red dog fingers. Stop. Yeah. Hot dog fingers. Well, that was, was interesting about this is because I feels like um, that Neo, that chosen one element got to a point where it's almost like she could fabricate different universes which again is like i guess in the theory is is right com completely in its element uh to exist because in the theory of multiverse every variation of you it could exist so there might be a universe where yeah um maybe some evolution took a different turn well, okay, so with that, um, is this the multiverse multiverse movie that Doctor Strange wish it was? I thought about that a lot because I'm like, oh, this this is this is what Sam Raimi was trying to do. This is a better multiverse movie. Yeah, yeah. I think in in practice, but in in theory, no, because in Doctor Strange's multiverse, that's a bit more chaotic, and those worlds are way more extreme and and exaggerated this seems very grounded in still realism like it's not like um we're jumping into worlds where you know uh i i i guess you could put it that way but there's still you know like you are still you in in this world and there's still no not super powers that exist there's still no superhuman okay. elements there's still no cosmic elements that come into our universe here so i can't we can't go into a, another universe and like you know thanos won this one in this movie you go to another universe and jordan knows how to play piano or you okay. go into this universe and you know eric knows how to tap dance what would you do um very well <laughs> No, okay, so I'm going to tell you when um, I started to get into it. So it was the fight. So this this movie is a movie that I've seen before, right, where we get this uh, with Chinese, right, Chinese family, and they own a laundromat, and the wife is just defeated. She's unhappy. They have a daughter. They're not happy that their daughter is gay. 
blah, 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 right? It's just kind of hitting the beats in the notes, you know? And then, oh, they're, they're audited by the IRS, you know? And they have to meet Jamie Lee Curtis and this whole multiverse thing is starting to talk, you know? Like, what happens is that is that her husband kind of like, kind of like zones out and is like this other person, right? And he has these two uh, really, really early 2000s Bluetooth headsets on, which I love. And that's the way you communicate, right? Like with the, with the multiverse is how you jump to multiverses with the two headsets. That's how they do it, yes. That's how they do it. So it's like really funny. Um, but I'm just, I'm just skipping because I wanted to tell you the moment where I was like, oh, okay, this movie's fun. Is when um, the uh, is when the security guys come, and the husband's now the badass husband, and he has a fanny pack, which I look at fanny packs differently now, and eats a half a thing of chapstick, and then just completely brings me back to uh, Rumble in the Bronx with Jackie Chan. <laughs> yeah. Just just completely goes nuts with people with this fanny pack. He puts fish rocks in it and just smacks. It. I, I loved this fight. This was fun, and then I was like, "Okay, I'm into this movie now." Before it was kind of fun; it was it 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 it, it had its moments. But the fanny pack fight is when I got into it. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Like, what do you think? Oh yeah, you know what was fun? I think about this element is that part of the movies when that golden age where we grew up, where adventure movies started with it just being another day. You were doing your normal routine. You were going about the beats, but then it came into your lap. You know, you are the chosen one. Those were fun as, as a kid because they seemed to be a lot more playful and exaggerated and kind of like the one day. I'm not talking about like, you know, adventures and babysitting type of stuff. You know, I'm talking about like, you know, get sucked into the TV and you, you have to do the, the whole adventure, you know, type of thing. This is one of those movies where, uh, you're on page your master. Where, yeah, yeah. Page, page master is another one. Yeah, where right, Evelyn is going through her day, and miserable as it is, and then one day, uh, almost in like her worst part, in in her IR in the meeting of the IRS office, where her daughter doesn't show up, she's having all these issues with her father. You know, it's just really living, really living a bad life. And yeah, her husband Wayman suddenly turns into this confident, this this person and it's just like there's no time to talk we got to do this giving you this quick ultimatum you know R right. red pill or blue pill which one do you want to take real quick so there's your matrix right there right you know do you right, want to turn right into the closet or do you want to turn left into the irs meeting you know or do this to escape and see the real world mm -hmm. and uh, so i can see yeah there's a lot of that the the sleeping and then uh, awakening to the real kind of things that that are happening uh, that's that's fun, and then yeah, it, it draws you in because you don't know what's happening. You don't know what like what what's happening, what's going on. I, all right, I'm I'm down to see where this rabbit hole goes. Let's go. Let's see right how this adventure happens. And you could see her make the decision when she's just over it uh, with Jamie Lee Curtis really playing her part as I don't know, just a a, a lame bureaucrat. You know, just just kind of sitting there, just you know piles of paperwork in front of her just you know stamps this sign that and i actually like her so, a lot she did a really good job um for the for the role that she was given yeah like i don't know if she deserves oscar for best supporting but i love some of the some of the makeup design because what they did is i don't know if you noticed i did uh because they do the full body shots they made like a little pudge belly on her you know, have, you know, yeah, and and they made her look a lot older, you know, and just it looks like, you know, this is the only power this woman has in her life at home. She's probably just with crazy cats or a husband that doesn't want her anymore. She's having ramen noodles for dinner, you know, just miserable. So when other people come in that she feels is beneath her, she has to give that stamp. She kind of reminds me of that evil boss and wanted that got done with the stapler. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's what she kind of reminds me of. So well, I thought she was good in too, where like the shoulders are just dropped always at the side, and she's always right. just like, ugh, you know, just slumping. That mouth is always like slightly open, just in in like a disappointing fashion. Yeah, right. I mean, it it looks like she survived a babysitter killing forty years ago. There you go. There, I I I thought of that joke and I kept that in my back pocket. Um, so yeah, so, it's it snaps yeah. too, and we got like this matrix thing where she's now. 
uh, kind of jumping in and refusing to believe this, right? She doesn't want right. to is think this is real she's like no this is all a joke you're just being dumb and silly this is not happening she sees the fight which is yeah i would say is is really fun that was a fun fight yeah uh and then you get we get to see a, a bit more right isn't this where the, the closet attack happens as well too where Jamie this was like, a clo- yeah <laughs> curtis hits the circle on her head right which we don't understand the circle at this point but i kind of want to skip it's a threat um but I want to skip the point that okay, so we find out that this that 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 her husband, uh, the other version of him, he's in this verse called the Alpha Verse, right? Yep. And Deadpool two style, that there's this evil thing, there's this evil person, bad guy, if you will, that has become a, a self aware of the multiverses, and they're trying to destroy everything. That's right. Tell me that's not the plot of Deadpool 2. That is the plot of Deadpool 2, in a way. Sure, you're, you're good. Okay, okay. I'll make sure I wasn't being a jerk. And so this husband is her husband, but he goes in and out of the body or the consciousness, if you will, and so does everybody else because they're all connected to this multiverse thing. And there's a circle on a lot of people's heads and we don't know what the circle is. I'm assuming it's the symbol of this bad guy, right? Yeah. It's, it's a, th- a threatening force that has made itself known to the viewer. Gotcha. And now the sad laundromat wife has to understand the matrix, the multiverse, if you will, has to give herself up give herself into it, if you will, right? And, I mean, I don't want to spoil it because you kind of have to in a way. I mean, we are, we, I mean, we are going to have to spoil it, but it, uh, you, don't, you really don't uh, necessarily have to right now. It's, it's one of those where she, she does refuse to believe everything that's happening, but the ultimatum happens. The pills are presented to her yet again. It's like, all right, well, you can then choose to stay in this world and live with the consequences that you created, which is right after she punched Jamie Lee Curtis, right? Accidentally right. thinking that right. she was, <laughs> that she was charging at her when really she was just going on break or something with her old right. lady cart, which is great. Uh, or she could leave all this and go jump into the multiverse and, and go to your true potential. I think that's probably what the big sell is, right? Because this entire part to this, uh, character, we are led to believe that she feels disappointed, uh, right, on all the missed opportunities of what she felt she she could have been. Like she right. wanted to buy the karaoke machine because she wants to sing, and what the, the uh, Jamie Lee Curtis tells her about all the other things that she tried to purchase because she thought that she could be, you know, a dancer, a singer, you know, whatever all the other aspirations or all the other dreams that she had that she just um, never went through on or didn't go through. Yeah, and. That's probably what what got it is uh, that all right you, you know that you have something in you you know you have this fire that's just been kind of sitting quietly and dormant and that you are able to do so much more than what you're you know you what you're living in time to do it let's go right so uh, so things she's like yeah let's I'm down to go do that. So why this is happening, I mean, like she gets sucked in and out of multiverse, you know, the camera goes really fast. She's like doing this kind of motion when she's going through everything. Um, and, I, and, I, and I'm sitting here thinking, why is this film of the year? The story isn't nothing new. The story is kind of slapstick and funny. Is it only winning because of visual effects? I mean, the acting is nothing that's blowing me away. I mean, I'm being honest. It, it's nothing serious? that's like. Jordan, I, you know what? I bawled like three times in this movie. This, this is a beautiful movie. It, okay. It's uh, um, the movie that I saw was was not a story about a person jumping through universes. It was about a, a person learning that what you do has an effect. The this person who is just scorned, resentful, and and just you know bitter, jaded for her life because of the, all the things that happened to her around her, and so now because of that she's doing the same thing and we see throughout this entire movie that the more the deeper that she accepts this this hole this this donut you know this this darkness this depression this nihilism that comes into it 
the the worse everything gets around her. Um, a good example would be uh, in a flashback, maybe towards the like, mid-movie, when she's in the laundromat and she got drunk and she's singing in the karaoke and she's being the drunk girl on the on the mic, right? Being right. an embarrassment to, to her husband and to everybody there. And then the IRS comes and they arrest her and she bashes a window, you know, and she's doing all these bad things and it ripples. It shows that her doing the bad thing, that it, it messes her dad up, it messes her husband up, it messes Jamie Curtis. Everything that she does bad is rippling. And it showed in that, that phone that, you know, her green dot, suddenly all her multiverse just went red. You know, that you being negative has an effect. But then she learns through all these actions that, be, you know, that the more that um, that she wanted to be with her daughter and she was consumed by her daughter's kind of nothingness. And through this despair, when she saw through her husband that he chose, instead of doing this, that he chose to love and be an optimist instead of doing this, she then realizes that if you give love, that that will ripple. And that will change everything. She learns this lesson not to fight with, you know, uh, how she was brought up to fight. That You know, that she should fight with this other way. And because of that, you know, it, it was a different effect. Instead of her bouncing in the multiverse and inflicting the worst on everybody, you know, because you have this power now. Oh, I can turn this, this you know, this little uh, straw that I have into an axe and I'll just chop you in half. Instead, she could make that to be the good in everybody. You know, why destroy you when I can make you the happiest that you've ever been and to where you just, you don't want to destroy anymore. You know? Sounds like this movie is really, really hitting for you. I I mean, yes. I'd say, because there's a part when, there's three different perspectives I see from it. There's like the daughter's perspective who is she feels like she's in this box of right all the time, right? That that her mom put her in and she can't get out of this box. She wants to live her own life, but she can't because there's the constant glow of this, the shadow of her mom, you know? She feels that no matter what she does, no matter what she does, it's not going to matter. Nothing matters. It's not going to matter because her mom's still going to hate it. She's still going to be resented for being a lesbian. She's never going to meet that approval. Everything is a donut, and there's nothing in the middle. Okay. I got nothing to say on that one, that's, meaning uh, that you got me. That's, you got that's me on that. Is, but yeah. That, no, I mean, okay. Yeah. And then um, the, the husband, Wayman, has his own you know, brilliant storyline as well, too, because he has the same life. He tells her, like, I, I'm living the same life here. I'm with you. I've I've been on this earth as many days as you have. I know what this looks like. You know, I've been with you through these ugly times. But you chose this way. I chose this other way. This right. is how I do it. It works. And sure enough, I it, it at the end I think it brings up everybody in the in the best light. Well, also it works for me because it's like what she discovers that she has this power, uh, the mom, if you will. Uh, we have different scenarios of her leaving her family to go with her her boyfriend and getting the life that she has now or not leaving her boyfriend. She becomes like this kung fu uh, master actress type, you know, and like who doesn't think about choices like that in their lives as they grow older, right? Oh, if I would have turned left instead of right, maybe this could have happened, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I totally get that. Um, I myself have personally gone through that recently. You know all about that. <laughs> so hey, That's just it. It's, yeah. it's, it's the human part we've all been through that part where the what ifs right um do you okay okay so you brought up the donut i feel like we gotta talk sorry it's a bagel it's an everything bagel (laughs) but just you know that's what that metaphor is right is that it's everything but there's nothing in the middle she's empty empty so let okay so i mean we gotta talk about that part then right we gotta talk about depression it's joy's depression Her name's Joy, but she's depressed. Ha. There we go. Right. Um, The bad guy is Joy, right? The bad guy is her daughter. Because we find out in another multiverse, or is this the Alphaverse still? It's everything, everywhere all at once. Nice. Um, Is that the mom is like this 
in this one multiverse, the mom is like this super, super scientist and knows about the multiverse. So then she like does all this testing on Joy, her daughter. Am I pretty much saying that right? She's You're doing right. all this test and, and then and then Joy it was supposed to kill her, but somehow makes her like this super like a uh, 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 he shall who not be named thing. Yeah. Right. It just, it just makes her like this supreme thing uh, to and pretty much. She is resentful from her, from her mom on testing on her kind of like polka dot man. Yeah. And right. Th- that's, that's also kind of the running thing too, is that in every version, it seems that the mom, Evelyn, had expectations for Joy that Joy would never live up to. And right. Joy obviously wants to live her own life and can't ever do that with um, parents like that. That hits home too, doesn't it? <laughs> right? Is this movie Is this movie about something else? Uh, my second favorite fight is, of course, the hallway fight, right? With, with uh, Joy. What's the, the, oh, Jobu Tapaki is the bad guy's name. Um, I the uh, hallway back. scene is great. Um, I think Joy is wonderful in this scene. Um, just just the different weapons, the way she kills people. I found it interesting. What weapons turn into is hilarious, right? Um, there was an Oscar in one of them. Was there? I was I was still giggling of the other one, the other. Yeah weapons yeah i was just like oh my god oh yes the uh the the phallic yes the phallic ones not too many Uh, movies you can see uh guards getting beat with uh i don't know two foot dongers right who who win film of the year yes yes um and then finally she has a little chit chat with her with uh with evelyn with her mom and this is when they do the uh this whole hand thing right that i can't like that there you go the hand thing and uh, she gets her to see what uh, her lair, if you will, a- another universe. And this is where we get the everything bagel thing. Yeah. About why she is the way she is. And now we have the symbol. This is why people have this bagel. Yep. This is basically just recruiting into her nihilism that nothing matters. It it's it's pointless. What you do. Why why even bother doing it? Right. So, I, I, I kind of dig joy in this. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, uh, I would, yeah. I, I really think that everyone involved in this was really knocked out of the park. I know that Jamie Lee Curtis. Um, we had just talked about that, but again, her small part that she played, I think she knocked it out of the park. I don't think it was deserving of the award. I'm repeating myself, but uh, like uh, everyone that played their parts, Stephanie's. Uh, oh, the girl who plays Joy, Stephanie Sue, mm-hmm. Sue mm-hmm. or whatever. Uh, she's also in like Mar- uh, Mrs. Mabel. I think she's fantastic. Uh, Kiwi Kwan. Uh, we all know a short round. He he does fantastic in this movie. That is short round. Yes, and he wins the Oscar. Uh, Michelle Yeoh. Uh, I think just where have I seen her from? Michelle Yeoh. Yeah, just tell me. Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Is that is that the last time I've seen her? Crazy Rich Asian. Tomorrow Never Dies. Do you okay. know her from the Bond movie? Is that what it is? Was she? Was she? Uh, she was the. She was the Chinese Bond girl in, in Tomorrow Never Dies, huh? Yeah. Okay. Thank uh, you. I think she's. I think she's in, the, in some Marvel stuff too, probably. But um, yeah, basically, if there was a, a movie with probably some sort of you know big Chinese kind of maybe probably the Mummy too. Remember when the Mummy did like the the. They steered away and did that whole Chinese thing with like Jet Li and stuff. Number three, she was in that one too. I'm willing to bet. Let's take a look. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, she was. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez, Hollywood, you are predictable. Well, yeah, I don't know that short round had a career. Uh, he didn't very much. That's why this was such a a great story and why um, the Oscars and the Academy as a whole really needed this this year coming off of the slap last year they needed this was a very wholesome you know where they got uh this awesome movie with these uh, uh cultured actors who have who've not had good representation in hollywood before now nominated and winning in these huge categories 
right? Like that's that's the big. short round win. And yeah, he won for best supporting. And, oh, and uh, Brandon Fraser won for best acting. But yeah, I think he was a part where his story, where it's like he was not necessarily like you know uh, living out of a car, but I think he had to like turn down uh, like healthcare or insurance. Uh, you know, he was uh, things got rough for him. I'm sure. Maybe not. Maybe not like I don't know if it was you know desperate. But um, it's a comeback story, and everyone likes that. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, what else can we talk about? Help me out here. What else I can mean, we talk for, about? For the rest of the, the, yeah. the movie? Um, talk well, about it. I, 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 how do you think about, uh, again, the, the different parts of the, of the movie? that You have Joy, who we were talking about separating. Michelle Yeoh, who just wants to be her own independent person. And then hmm. the husband, who just wants everyone to love each other. They all kind of get it at the end when um, they find that, you know, throughout all this, they do have each other, right? That they are with each other. And then um, Evelyn learns to, to love every everyone. I think it, the big part of this is um, the, the letting go part in the parking lot. Oh, yeah. Be- uh before that, you just refresh my memory. One of my favorite lines of this movie is when Joy says to Evelyn, I'm not this, I'm paraphrasing, but you have to suck in this universe so you can be successful in every other universe. And I was like, oh, oh, that was a big one. That was a big line right there. And that just brought me when you said the parking lot. Sorry, but uh, that, that was that was a nice little, uh, yes kind of a theory yeah. there too is that yeah because you were so bad in every in this universe it led you to be the best person to Everywhere fight else. yeah to, to fight everything yeah. here which was uh I- interesting um i i just liked uh how that scene in the parking lot because before that Evelyn thought that she had come to something, that, that she had had her epiphany, her breakthrough, when she stood in front of her father and said, no, Dad, this is my daughter and her girlfriend. You know, yeah. And then her daughter, you know, Joy storms off and just like, did you think that that was it? Like, the, that that was, like, your moment here? You're still doing it for you. That's a big part. I think that was probably one of my favorite parts in the movie is because... It's her wake-up call, Evelyn's wake-up call, that she thought what she was doing, what she was doing, was being noble and standing up for her daughter. But right. really, what all she was doing was doing it for herself. She wasn't doing it for Joy. She was, you know, making it about her again. And Joy put that into her perspective, that like, no, don't you see that like it's it's different, you know, it's. But did but 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 is that the case or was she just doing that to show that she's accepting of joy now? I she I think she did that because that's what she thought the right answer was. She didn't fully believe it. She didn't fully believe it. She was just trying to go through the motions of like thinking that that's what the answer was. She didn't she's not fully learned her lesson until she lets go, until she lets go of joy. And, and that's, then she, and that's a hard thing, and I'm sure as as you know, maybe as a parent, you know, mm-hmm. uh, that uh, you or I can't understand that uh, now, you know. But uh, you know, twenty so years or so, if and when we have a uh, a kid or you know your kid, just you know, it comes to that that moment where it's just like, hey, I need to do this on my own. Are you going to be able to let go? No, never, 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 ever. <laughs> no <It's> hard <laughs> right like uh, you know yeah. at, at what point you know it can it, does your daughter look at you with tears in her eyes and say please you know let right. me let me do this I, that's gotta be that's gotta be a gut punch oh it is definitely a gut punch on that I, I mean and it's good to see that a character i mean like we knew where this movie was going, right? And that's not a slap, right? Because you know this movie starts off with Evelyn being unsure of herself, stressed out, overworked, overslept, all these different things. Uh, underslept, I'm sorry. And then we knew as as the movie went on that she was going to be able to let all this go, right? Because she's our hero. So eventually she she's, was going to be – She's also the villain because she created Jobu. Like the daughter is is – a manifestation of her hate 
Sure. Yeah. You, you know, like that's that's what was so great about it is that she never even realized she's thinking that she's fighting a bad guy. And Joy the entire time is like, what do you think this is? You know, you're not fighting a bad guy. You're you're fighting yourself. This is something you created. You're fighting you know, the the yourself. Yeah, the yeah. this 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 hate that you created so much is now sucking in everything. Your whole life, your whole right. and all the different versions of you. Uh, you need to let it go. You need to get past that, you know, or accept that there are in your hate that other people love you still. That just because, you know, you feel this way doesn't mean you should feel this way. Right. And there's and there's and there's more to this movie than just a fun little action matrixy film. I think this movie's definitely deeper than Matrix, of course. Um I, I'm really liking the visuals of it too. Uh, some parts got me a little, little dizzy, <laughs> but uh, sure. it was, it was, it was fun. Like it was, it was definitely. I do not want to see this on IMAX. <laughs> what do you feel of the of the romance part when her and Wayman? How um, that part when she comes to find that this entire time through her just being a nasty person, really. And, and again, I can't really falter on that. Her dad is obviously a, a lot of part of that too. But throughout all of this, he he still chose to love. Like, is that well, not something that that line when in in her you know award uh, in her fame universe when he says that you know I would still even if the option I would still choose um, to do taxes or run a laundromat with you. Yeah, but didn't he file for divorce, or wasn't he? He was filing for a divorce in those scenes too. Uh, yeah. Well, in that one, in the main universe, in their universe, yeah. that, that we were introduced to, uh, the, the the bad universe, I call it, because everything was going wrong in that, um, which was, I guess, the the source of all this, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, that was just another element that she realized that okay, everything just sucks, but it's in that universe that we got the parking lot scene that women even. Through wanting a divorce, even through all that, he still talked to uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, whatever her name was. Uh, Hot dog fingers. Yeah. <laughs> it, you know, he, he still was showing love and still, like, trying right. to represent and do all this. Even well, because he still he's loves still, her. He's still trying. And I think that's when um, it, it, it switched for her. And she. Sure. That was her moment to switch yeah. it. And right. uh, big props to Michelle Yeoh for this, because I think the if you, again, on the second rewatch, that that first half of the movie, she wears like just that that face of just like, you know, like a down face, you know, almost like down brow, just like always like frustrated, pissed, bothered, uh, impatient, you know, just kind of like, like, what? Who are you? What? I, I don't want to be here. You know, hurry up, hurry up. Uh, and then the second half, when she learns to love, it it was more relaxed. Her brow is is up. It's you know right. her eyes are a bit more, I don't know, open just to the to the beauty of the world. And she's like, oh you know, oh hi, you know, yes, let's do this. Hey, and she's you know learning to show love. The facial acting, I think, changed. So I don't, I, think, I, I yeah. see a lot of it. Yeah, no, I uh, I see a lot of. <laughs> I see a lot of the facial acting. The reason I'm laughing is just because now that I officially know that it's short round, it's just I just really wish he wore his his Yankee ball cap and kicked some ass. <laughs> um, I believe to... somewhere in here they said that there is a Easter egg of something like that. Uh, how do you feel about uh, <laughs> the the rec raccoonui raccoonui raccoon? <laughs> um, I don't have an opinion. That's funny. I don't have an opinion. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think that was a fun because uh, it shows again how she's just kind of making up almost right. like a, a a universe type type of thing. Which I guess that's the theory. If you can think of it, then technically not, it you know not it, the raccoon. <laughs> I thought that was that was great. I just think it was great when she was had that. Speaking of, I was talking about our dad podcast. Yeah. Is her mom moment where she's like, "Oh, you know the movie the, with the the thing on the top of the head, the raccoon." Control the raccoon. <laughs> to take him out in a cage. Yeah, and that moment, by the way, when 
when Joyce is taped to the chair and her mom says that and she realizes that she, <laughs> she meant Ratatouille. Uh, that's like the perfect reaction. Because that's, yeah. that's how I would react. Just like, oh my yeah. God, this mom was talking about... Oh, that's... Yeah, it's perfect. Just like an innocent laughter. Like a pure... Uh, innocent laughter. Oh. Anyway, how about uh, James Hong in this movie? That's the dad, right? Yes. I've seen him. You, of course, he's been one of the hardest working actors in Hollywood for the past, what, 60 something years? I have 70 seen years. Him. I have seen him in a handful of stuff. I was, I was trying to remember because, because I seen that actor. I was like, okay, I've, I've seen this dad. I've seen this dad. Where have I know this dad? And like what I like to do, the reason why I'm like this sometimes, because I like to play the game of we have our smartphones and I could just easily go on IMDb and, and find it out myself. But I want to be able to have that satisfaction of of knowing where I've you know seen this person from. Do you, you know? Can you... No. Really? No. Where have I seen him from? God, man, so many different things. For me, uh, unfortunately, like there's so many things that pop up in the head. But uh, the first that pops up to me is Wayne's World Two. <laughs> he plays Cassandra's dad. <laughs> oh, he does, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, that, yeah, that's okay. gonna yeah. be it's gonna be. Um, great. Uh, he plays a voiceover in a lot of stuff. He uh, was in Kung Fu Panda as uh, as the dad, I believe. As he's always voiceover. a dad figure. Uh, he's big in like the the eighties, man, like eighties action movies and stuff like that. Here, let's take a look. Uh, let me pull up this stuff. A lot of TVs. Yeah, basically, he just had a long run in the seventies. Is basically you know like token Chinese guy number one. You know, right? Dry cleaner owner type of thing um then he started to get into a bit more i don't know it's it's still hollywood so a lot of like uh action like uh ninja movies 80s, i want to know Airwolf. i want to know what happened to the to to the long hair agent asian actor that was in all the 80s action movies like in die hard and stuff Remember uh, like that? here we go yeah <laughs> there's a few of uh big trouble in little china Okay. Okay. All right. Thank that, you. Yep. Right there. Right, there. right there. Right there. Yeah. The nerds too. Yeah. Hot to trot. Holy <laughs> shit! Why? Excuse me. I remember this movie. Is this Bobcat Goldthwait? Yeah, the talking horse. <laughs> He's in that. This. Oh, that's right. John Candy was the voice of the horse. Oh man, I'm gonna relive this one and go. I know what I'm doing today. You're gonna watch heavyweights. Got it. Hot to try. Yep. Well, anyway, yeah, James Hong. He's, he's yeah. Uh, okay. Thank happy. you. Big trouble, little chat. No, he was fine in this. He uh, like I said before, I I've seen this actor, so I'm like, where have I seen him? I played the game for a while. Um, he does everything that I thought he would do. He, he he comes off as this grumpy dad, and then of course it's no surprise when you know he's a part of the multiverse thing and the Joy's trying to break in, knocking the door. You know that whole segment. So I I mean none of that stuff surprised me. Sure. Uh, he was fine. I, he was fine. No complaints. Like, I think this is going to be like the lowest large bag I could give because I don't have complaints. You know what I mean? Well, don't give it a large just because like you feel like you need to. If you didn't. No. You know, if you felt like this is a mid, then go ahead and say it. But well, let's get into our poker with that. The reason I'm going to give it a large is because I do enjoy the film and I kind of like to think I'm the filter for my wife. My wife's like, what are you reviewing this week? And I told her, she's like, eh, Saturday afternoon movie, big guy, have fun. And then I'm telling her about it. She's just like, eh. But I, th- this this kind of that judge for me where it's like, does this movie deserve film of the year? I don't know. The movie next week is going to be a huge contender. However, though, uh, visually was great. Acting wasn't anything that floored me. It wasn't no Brendan Fraser acting. But it was still good. You know, like, and we always kind of base our popcorn ratings with how we feel about the movie. And the movie is a solid movie. It does not deserve a medium. It's a solid, good overall movie. But do I think it's great? No. But I think it's solid. And I cannot, I can't give it hate. You know what I mean? Like, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm trying to sit here and go, okay, do I really like it? Do I not like it? Um knowing that some of the actors like short round and stuff like that. That's great. Jamie Lee Curtis. I thought that was fine. The movie was solid. I said that six times already. I cannot complain. So what is your popcorn rating then for everything 
everywhere all at once. Uh, I, I give this a large bag. Easy. I, I thought yeah. this movie was uh, hands down just gorgeous. I, I think it was, um, uh, as far as like the, the story and everything else, I just enjoyed every bit of it. I think uh, Stephanie Hsu, the, who played Joy, um, I'm excited to see more from her. I think she knocked mm. it out of the park. And it, frankly, I think she was a bit more deserving of the awards uh, than some of the other people in this. Right. But it, it's hard company. Uh, when you're that age and when you're nominated against that, those same people. Uh, but I'm excited to see more from her. I think she's got a great catalog so far, and um, I, I'm excited to see more from her. Everyone else, I think, was more deserving, I, or was deserving of it. I think Michelle Yeoh was deserving of, of her win. I think she knocked it out of the park in this one. Uh, I liked uh, Kiwi Kwan in this. I think he really brought the emotion. Um I think he he earned it just from being able to to play kind of like this this mousy owner laundromat owner to this this confident uh, fight ninja master. It, okay. it, it was great. I, I yeah. I, I guess there was just so many parts of this movie that just hit everything because it was there was action, there was comedy, there was you know uh, uh, socio drama, there was family drama, there was a, a lot of it was just in here. And I don't want to say that, you know, repeat the movie joke over again, but uh, it, it's, it just worked. Um, I, I enjoyed it, everything about it. And I have, I have no complaints. I think it was, it was fantastic. The Daniels did a good job. I like their work. They did Swiss Army Man, which I thought was another fantastic movie. Oh, God. <laughs> so I think oh, it was good. I, I'm excited to, to see this. Uh, Jenny Slate was in this movie. She, uh, just to, to point that out, that there's two movies that this actress uh, was in that was nominated for Best Picture. So that's uh, that was this one and Marcel the Shell. <sighs> All right. Well, I, I, I so, liked the director just before you told me about Swiss Army Men. So, uh, I, I, yeah, I just really enjoyed this movie. Um, for everything that it was, I, I'm excited. The wardrobe, uh, wardrobe in this was fantastic. I understand that uh, uh, Black Panther also won for a costume, but this had to have been a close second. There was a lot of costume yeah. in, in this, yeah. a lot of wardrobe, and a lot of detail that they had to go into it as well. So I think that was that was great. Uh, yeah, it, this is a large bag. I, I can't say any more good things about it. There are maybe some things if I had to gripe about it, just to be fair. Um, I'm not too keen on that on that runtime. I'm not too keen on maybe some of the jumps that they had or some of the jokes that they had, uh, like the prolonged part of the hot dog fingers. I understand like the joke of it, what they were trying to do, um, but I, that part just kind of, you know, as like tears are down, coming down my face now, I'm laughing because there's a, a part where the hot dog fingers there. Or Jamie Curtis is playing the piano with her feet. You know, or which, like, or like them just being rocks. But that was a big part. Like that was, uh, I understand. Like, yeah, that that was kind of a simple part. But uh, I think that was a big part of the movie. It's actually one of my my favorite parts as well too. Uh, just because it's, you know, there's there's a universe where there's no chaos. It's, you know, it's quiet. You can just do this. Where nothing does matter in this universe because you're a rock. What I'm just going to be a rock. You know, and that was, uh, I think, another point for Joy to show to her mom that, like, hey, we're rocks in this universe, you know, and yet you're still complaining. You're still, you're as a rock oh, with this great grand view. You're still complaining about something. And I think that was another part of the, you know, the point to bring into Evelyn, just like, stop. You're, you're everywhere we go. You're just hating. Hate, hate, hate. Hate, 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 hate. Not to bring in the you know the haters ball from Dave Chappelle, but that's just all you do. Chill. That's so so much energy. Love for it. Just take a deep breath. Don't even hate. Don't even love for a moment. Just just chill. Just you know be for a moment, and then you know kind of come back to right. center. And that was I think that moment was okay. a big part of it. Was it was that fair enough? Even in this, you can still find something to complain about. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. Also, one thing I wanted to add before we get into the close of the show is A24 is, is hitting it. Is this Gen Z's Orion? Like, is this is this is this is, is this a new coming? We've been reviewing a lot of A24 films recently. 
and they're hitting. Yeah, you know, and I could tell you the reason why is because they're actually saying yes to these original projects. Mm -hmm. These aren't sequels. These aren't reboots. These aren't adaptations. Some of them are. But, you know, like, take the risk. Make a movie. Make a right. movie. Right. You and know? so far, I think... Fast were... 10? God. God. Yeah, you... I'll watch it. I don't want to. I kind of do. But, you know what I mean? Like, I'm right. watching... But I feel like we're more hate-watching now. Yeah, I, I would say that, yeah, I think the only movie that we've given a negative review, and I don't think it was really that negative, was the... Uh, um, well, what was it? The, the, the last summer we reviewed weird title, the one with the murder mystery Jurassic with the World. friends. No, the one with the, uh, the, uh, the, the friends, the, the murder mystery in the storm with Pete Davidson. Oh, bodies, 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 bodies. Yeah. That one, we, we didn't give a negative, negative review, but it wasn't a high review. Other than that, everything's been great. Like, uh, you, uh, you and I loved Northman. You changed my mind with the green Knight. I'm sorry, no, Northman's on A24, is it? it? Was it? One of those was not, and I was confused that one of them was. Because because you corrected me on that on one of those episodes. One of them was A24, one wasn't. Uh, Northman is not. Okay, all right. But you convinced me on Green Knight. They also did, you know, The Witch. The Witch is great. So these guys are hitting. This 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 brush company is hitting. The only reason why I bring up the whole Ryan thing is because in the eighties and nineties, Orion was that company that said, "Yes, yeah, Sons of the Lambs, RoboCop, movies that are great, that shouldn't be great, and like RoboCop should not be good." <laughs> you know what I mean? It yeah. should not be good. Uh, hence all the other sequels. But uh, anyway, yeah. So that concludes our review for this one. But of course. We appreciate you download us. Make sure to check us out at Movie Guys Podcast at podbeat.com. But just download us from the podcast app you listen to us on. It looks like a lot of you are listening to us on Spotify. So thank you. And then, of course, Apple Podcast as well. We'll be back next week for another awesome episode. Eric, thank you much for joining me. And we'll be back next week. Have a good night.